Hi everyone and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at lofting in both Blender and FreeCAD and comparing the process between the two packages. With this information you'll be able to transition between both the pieces of software or use one over the other. So when you create a loft you can create it with closed geometry or open geometry. With FreeCAD there are two workbenches that have lofting tools. There are other workbenches out there that can add on or we can go to something like the surface workbench where we can actually create a lofted surface via one of those tools in there. But we're gonna concentrate on the part and part design because they're the most common workbenches in FreeCAD and we'll learn how to loft in that before we move on to Blender. So for a loft, let's go for a open geometry loft. For that, I'm gonna use the part workbench because part design doesn't support open geometry. It only supports closed. So for that, we need some profiles and we can loft through those profiles. To do that, we'll go over to the sketcher and we can create some profiles in here. Let's create a new sketch, XY plane and hit OK. We're on the XY plane and I'm going to create something pretty simple in here. Let's go for, let's go for an arc, endpoint and room point arc. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to attach to the axis, click, come down to the other axis so it's attached and bring this out to about here. I'm just going to do the left hand side. Let's close that, that's our first profile. Let's take the sketch and come in, edit and duplicate selection. So I've duplicated that sketch and I'm going to double click it and we'll bring this down, let's say to about here and change it a bit. So I'm changing the profile. Let's come out a bit like that, close that, duplicate the sketch again. We don't have to do this, we can create our own. And what we'll do is bring this out this way a bit. Let's take the center point and bring it down. So I've created these three profiles. They're on the same plane at the moment. So we can see they're on the same plane. So I need to change that. Let's look at the front. And first of all, this is our first sketch. Our second sketch, I'm going to come into the placement and move it along the position along the Z axis and set that to something like 20. The next one we'll do at 40 along the Z axis. So we've got some separation between those. Next, we'll loft across these. So we're gonna use the lofting tools in the part workbench because these are open wires or open geometry. This tool here allows us to loft. Click on that and we'll take the sketches. Now they have to run in the sequence. So sketch, sketch one. So the first sketch is one here. You see it highlighted in green here. Let's double click that. The next sketch is the middle, double click. The next sketch is the end, double click. It's gonna create a surface. Now it's not going to be a ruled surface because we've got more than two profiles in here. If there's two profiles, we'll just loft from one to the other. But because we've got this additional profile, then a curvature is going to be added to allow a smooth transition through these. So that's okay that. And we get our loft. So we've got our lofted surface. And on the left hand side, you see the loft here and we've got some options here. So we can make it ruled if we wanted to. If I set that to true, what you'll see if I come around and click off, you see that these edges have now been separated with a vertex in between and we're just having a straight ruled line between those creating a ruled surface. And if we set that back to false and click, you see we get the curvature coming in. And this is now one single edge. We've got a max degrees here. And this one here, which allows us more control over the surface. And this, when we get more complex lofts, can come in hand. If we lower the max degrees, you probably won't see anything happen here, but we can get a tighter fit between our profiles or we can reduce some deformation in there from the lofting. The more profiles we have, the tighter the loft to the path that we want to follow. 
there are other workbenches out there that allow lofting that will actually create these profiles for you from boundary lines or boundary edges and a profile. One such workbench is called the curve shape workbench. One thing to note that in FreeCAD, if I come into the loft, double click on one of the sketches, I can move one of these sketches and change the loft. So I can change that lofted surface. If these sketches had an inner arc that was connected, so what we're creating is a closed wire or closed geometry, then we'll get a thickness. It would have an inner wall and we can have a shape in here and that will follow that shape in that wall. That means we can use that in the part workbench, but also in the part design workbench because the part design deals with closed geometry. In the part design, we have an additive loft and a subtractive loft. One that adds material, one takes the material away. Let's go over to Blender and see how we create a loft in there. So we can perform the same type of loft in Blender. I'm going to select this cube in the center and right click and delete. I'm going to select the XY plane, I'm clicking on the Z axis. So I'm looking down on the X and the Y. From here, I can start sketching in the profiles that I need. There are a number of options, but I'm going to come in and add a curve and a bezier. We get the bezier curve here, which I'm going to come into edit mode. I mean, here, use edit mode. I'm going to select that bezier curve and hit delete on the keyboard and we'll delete the vertices. So now I'm going to come over to the left hand side and use the freehand spline, this draw icon here. And I'm going to draw in the curve that I want. So we'll come up to this side. We're going to follow the same as what we did before in FreeCAD. And I'm just going to click and drag out a curve in here. Now I've got this curve in here. I'm going to select the select box tool. And now I can move these vertices. So let's zoom in a bit and move this down so we can see what we're doing. I'm going to come over and hide the grid. So we can see that there. Now with these points, I can select them and move them. So for instance, I can select this one and use the move tool or the scale tool or the rotate tool to rotate this around in the right position and get a better curve. Or if I cancel that and use select tool, the select box, I can click on this and use R to rotate and rotate this like so. I can use G to grab and move this wherever I want. So for instance, let's move it up to here and I can use the S to scale. So I can scale that point there. Right click will cancel that movement. So I can move these wherever I want, scale them, rotate them, etc. So I'm going to grab this one, bring it down here. And we'll rotate this as well to about here. So I've got my curve seen here. Let's come out of edit mode and go into object mode. So this is my Bezier curve and I'm not happy with that. So let's go into edit mode and just change this a bit. Let's grab that and pull this out this way. So I've grabbed the end and just pulled this out so it curves it more. Go back into object mode. So I've got my curve. I'm going to do the same. I'm just going to duplicate this. So this Bezier curve here, right click, copy, and then right click and paste. So we've got another Bezier curve in here. And let's do that again, right click and paste. So we've got three Bezier curves. And we've moved this around, say around to here. And I'm using the middle mouse button just to move this around. So I've got this around this way. I'm going to click on the second curve, this one here. And use the flyout window. And we've got a location here. So I'm looking to locate this along the Z axis. So I can move it up. If I start moving this up, I can move it into position. So somewhere here, let's zoom out. And also the other one, let's bring this up this way. So at the moment, 
all our curves are the same. Let's just click this one and go into edit mode and we'll change this. So I'm going to use the G to grab and move this say over here and this one G to grab and we'll add some curvature on here. This one move this down and maybe click on this point G to grab and pull this inwards. And you can see that I've got control of this as I move it in and out of how that's going to look. So now I've changed this one, I can come in and change the others. Let's come out of object mode and see what we've got. We've got this one here, which is at 3.1 millimeter and this one at zero. I'm going to change this one, this Bezier curve. So let's select it, come into edit mode and we'll just change this. So let's click on the end, G to grab and move this, just change it a bit. Let me zoom in at the center, G to grab, bring it down and we'll bring this point down, G to grab somewhere about here. So this gives it a bit of difference so we can see what happens when we loft through these. I'm still in edit mode at the moment and I've got to select each of these edges. So let's come over to object mode. If I wanted to loft through these, I need to join these. So I need to select all of them. We don't want the lights, so that's select them from this side. Click one, shift click down to the end or control click them. Let's come up to object and come down to the join. Control J on the keyboard. This joins those objects together. So now we can actually loft across these. But first thing we need is to make sure that these are a mesh. So we can right click while that's selected and convert to mesh. So that's converted to mesh now. And if we come over into edit mode, we can see that this is now a mesh with all these points going across. So all those vertices there. Because this is a mesh, we have these select modes here. So we've got the vertex, the, the edge, and the face. So I'm going to select edge, and now I can select the edges. So I want to select all these edges in here. So I'm just going to draw a square around them. And I've selected all those edges. And now for the loft, we take those edges and right click, and we use something called the bridge edge loops. If I click that, that creates a loft across all of these. Now you notice that the vertices going across here, these are all connected up. So we must make sure that we have the same amount of vertices on each of these curves. If we come down to the bridge edge loops option down the bottom here, if I open this up, then I've got some options in here. We've got profile smooth. We can change this if we want to sphere, and this will change the type of transition across these. I'm going to select smooth at the moment, and I'm going to increase the number of cuts. If I increase the number of cuts, you can see what's happening. The surface is changing, so we get a change in the surface there. And this allows me to use the interpolation of something like blend surface, and you see that change there. And we can really change the surface and the transition between these profiles with these options here. So we can decrease the amount of cuts and we get more of a ruled surface. We can increase these and we get a much cleaner transition between those. Now, one other thing to have a look at here is this profile factor. If this is increased, you can see the profiles are increased. So just watch out for that if we got some odd shapes like so. So we need to take that and make sure that's zero and click off. There are a number of other options here and we can play with those to our heart's content. Once we are happy with our loft, we can come out of edit mode and come back to object mode and we can see our surface and what it looks like. 
Now you notice that we've got some smoothing to do. We can right click and shade smooth. We get a nice smooth loft through there, a nice smooth surface. But one thing to remember is that though we've lofted through here, this isn't a non-destructive operation. If we look at the modifiers, we've got nothing to modify. And if we need to modify this, it's going to be direct modeling rather than parametric modeling. So just be wary of that because any modeling we need to do with this, we can't go back and edit those profiles because the Bezier curve is now the loft itself. Inside that, we can see the mesh. We can scale, move the mesh, scale, move the vertices or the edges in there. So we fall back to the direct modeling paradigm. So that's how to create lofts in both FreeCAD and Blender. I hope that was useful and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're enjoying these videos and you would like to support the channel, then you can do so via my Ko-Fi page. That's at ko-fi.com forward slash MJ3D Studio. Any donations will be used to help to span the channel. I'd like to thank you all for watching and I hope to see you again soon.